Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. We have 2xy plus 3x plus y equals 23, and we're going to be solving for x plus y. At least we're going to find the values of x and y, where x and y are integers. How about positive integers to narrow the solution set? Okay, so we are given an equation in two variables. How come we can find both of them with one equation? Because this is a special type of equation called Diophantine equation, which has solutions in integers. So we can do that. Most cases we have infinitely many solutions. I mean, finitely many solutions. Sometimes we have no solutions and there are many techniques. I also made a video about Diophantine equations. You can also check them out. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this in two ways, because I'd like to present more than one method. I know some people don't like it. They are like, okay, this can be done in 20 seconds. Why do you take eight minutes to explain it, right? Well, people need explanations. Not everybody is as genius as you are. Supposedly, that person is a genius. Who knows, right? Anyways, that's just my rant for this video. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve it. Start with the first method. So when we have an equation like this, there's a couple ways to approach it. One of them is, which is kind of like probably a safer method, I would say, to try to factor it. But not all equations are easily factorable, but you can give it a try. For example, these two terms, starting with x, y is always a good idea, by the way, the product. We can find a common factor for, which is x, right? So x followed by 2y plus 3. And then, uh-oh, we have y add, added to it. So the problem here is we don't have, we have two y here, but we only have y here. But guess what? That can be solved. You know how? We can multiply both sides by two. Let's do it because that's probably the easiest way to approach this. I'm going to go ahead and multiply by two, multiply by two, and multiply by two. Of course, it's done differently on the right-hand side. Don't do, just put a 2 there because that's going to make it 223, which is a good way of making a mistake. Okay, maybe not a good way. But you get the idea. We multiply everything by 2. Now we have 2y and 2y. But guess what? We don't have the 3. That can be easily fixed. Look at this. Add 3 to both sides and you're all set. Awesome. You see, in two easy steps, we make this equation manageable or factorable. Yes. Now, you might be questioning like, okay, what is the common factor? It is 2y plus 3. But what is it multiplied by here? By 1. If there's nothing that multiplies it, it's 1. But what is this? 46 plus 3 is 49 as far as we know, right? Now take a look. This is a common factor. We can pull it out, 2y plus 3. And then the other one becomes 2x plus 1 equals 49. Awesome. Now this is really cool. You know why? First of all, if x and y are positive integers, 2y plus 3 and 2x plus 1 are both odd integers. Do you see it? I hope you do. Now, if you multiply two odd integers, can you get 49? Absolutely, because 49 is also odd. If one of these were even, then we would be in big trouble, right? But we don't have that issue. So how do you factor 49? Make sure x and y are positive integers. Because I said that at the beginning, right? Well, the thumbnail... Did it show it? I don't know. I can't remember. But anyways, I don't think it showed it. Uh, but the title gave you an idea, hopefully. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at different ways of factoring 49. 49 and 1. Is, is that going to work? Y yes and no. Because this is going to give you x equals 0. You don't want that. Remember, we're looking for positive solutions. Right? So we're going to skip that one. What's the next one? Well, after 49 times 1, uh, since 49 is prime number squared, 7 squared, it can only be 7 and 7. And guess what? This works nicely. Look, 2y plus 3 is equal to 7. That is y equals 2. And this means x is equal to 3. So 3 comma 2 is a solution. Does that mean 2 comma 3 is also a solution? Not necessarily because we don't have that symmetry. Take a look at this. We have 2y plus 3 but 2x plus 1. Uh-oh, x and y are not interchangeable. How could you tell by looking at the original problem? Because they have different coefficients. See that? Okay, that's important. I just wanted to emphasize that real quick. Are there any other solutions? Let's check it out. Maybe this can be 1 and this can be 49. That seems to be the next option. But guess what? This means y is negative. You don't want that. Scratch it out. And there are no other solutions. You know why? 
because if you continue, you have to go into negatives, but they're not gonna work. So that's it. And this is really cool. You know why? Because we have a unique solution. And remember, we're looking for X plus Y, which gives us a unique answer. So uh, if three comma two is a solution, then X plus Y is equal to five. Isn't that cool? Okay, great. This doesn't bring us to the end. So stick around. We have the second method. I think you're gonna like the second method, but I could be biased. So let me know what you think, okay? I'd like to hear your thoughts. So here is the problem again, 2x plus three, sorry, 2xy plus 3x plus y equals 23. And here's the second method. And here's what makes it very different from the first one. First of all, we're gonna do some type of factoring, but our goal is gonna be different here. I want to isolate one of these variables. Which one do you wanna do? Doesn't matter, no big deal. Let's pick y because y appears twice, right? Well, x appears twice too, but anyways, you get the idea. So we're gonna bring these two together and I kind of separate the 3x a little bit so that we can kind of focus on this, look at this. My goal is gonna be the following. I want to factor out y and then I wanna go ahead and put the 3x on the other side, so subtract. And my goal is to isolate y. Because if I can write y in terms of x, and we know that x and y are integers, should we be able to find x, y from here? Well, yes, but it's not going to be super easy. Okay, let me show you though. So now we have the following. Great. But let's fix it up a little bit. Uh, I want to write the x first, like this. Great. So this is supposed to be an integer. How can this be an integer? That's a good question, right? When I, look at, uh, when I look at a problem like this, let's say you were given, suppose you were given something like this, on the, like uh, a different scenario, right? You would probably do the, try to do this. F separate a four from here. You know how you could do that? You could do four x plus four plus 19 divided by x plus one because this is four times x plus one. You will get four plus 19 over x plus one. And now you're thinking what are factors of 19? See, that's the goal. But here the problem is, Houston, we have a problem. It's not an integer. That's negative three halves. You don't want that. So how do you fix it? Easy. Well, we multiply both sides by something so that negative three x is divisible by two x or whatever, how, however many x's we have here is divisible by two x. And since three isn't divisible by two, I need a two in the numerator. So multiply both sides by two, by two, okay? So if you do that, you get two y and just multiply the numerator. Don't multiply everything, obviously. And you get that. Now, this is really cool because this is an integer ratio. Beautiful. Now we can go ahead and do the following. How do you write negative six X so that it's a multiple of two X plus one? Well, think about it this way. What would happen if you multiply two X plus one by negative three? Because to get negative six X from two X, you must multiply by negative three, but you have to multiply the whole thing so that you can separate it. I hope that makes sense. I don't know if it's confusing. It kind of is if you haven't practiced this long enough, but here is what it, uh, how it goes. This is negative six X minus three. What do I have? Negative six X plus 46. So I need to adjust it to get a negative three there. Makes sense? So here's how it goes. Negative six X minus three is what I need. To make 46, I need to add 49. Aha, uh -huh. the same 49 pops up again. That's why, there's a good reason. Now we're gonna go ahead and separate these two things like this, kind of like unadd these two fractions, kind of reverse engineer the addition problem. And then you're gonna write this as negative three times two X plus one, divide by two X plus one. And that does the trick and guess what? The rest is gonna be the same thing, but just written, you know, we arrived at the same thing, but in a different way. That's why it's considered the second method. You know how the rest goes? You can just keep it like this and think about it this way too. Like what would divide 49? It has to be an odd number. So it can be one, seven or 49. And remember X and Y are positive, but if two X plus one is one, then X is zero, you don't want that. If two X plus one is seven, then X is three, you want that because that'll give you four or two for y, so this is a good one, but you don't want two x plus one to be 49 because that would mean that x is 24, or this would be one and two y would be negative. And you don't want that either, therefore you end up with the same solution, the exact same thing. 
And guess what? This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and I have another channel dedicated to complex numbers, which is called A plus BI. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.